Hi guys. So in this video, we will be discussing about singleton design pattern. So here we will be starting with creational design pattern. So we have already discussed what is a design pattern and why is why it is used for, what is its basic purpose, what is gang of four design pattern, and what are the types like creational, structural, behavioral. These three types of design patterns are there, right? So from today we will be starting with creational design pattern. So the first design pattern that comes into it is singleton design pattern. Okay. So it is very much important for interview perspective. Ninety. 9% of the interviewer, if they are touching design pattern, they will ask you singleton design pattern and its concept entirely in depth. So we should be knowing it from within. What is it actually? So let's share my screen and let me tell you what exactly it is. Okay. So first, first of all, we need to understand ki how singleton design pattern works. Okay. So first of all, uh, let's suppose there is a database present over here, right? So this is DB. There is database present over here. And what is happening? You have written some line of code in Java. And with the help of that, what is happening? You are trying to save the resource in database or fetch the resource from the database with the help of ID, those type of operations you are doing. So what is happening basically, if you're trying to fetch the data from the DB again and again, again and again, then what will happen? It will utilize a lot of resources in the, in the memory, okay? And it will take a lot of uh, memory consumption basically to fetch the data from database. So that is actually not feasible enough. Every time if you if you are uh, recurring, recurring uh, fetching the date, same data again and again. Okay, so what you can do basically, you can store it in a separate set of data, okay, in a particular list of objects and from there you can fetch it instead of calling it again and again, okay. Or else you can make use of singleton design pattern so that one instance is only created when we have to access the data from the database and after creating the instance of that once, we can just get the instance, okay. So that that's why here singleton design pattern come into picture. Okay, so here singleton design pattern comes into picture. So basically what it does, it will create only one single instance at any given point of time. Okay, and it will not create multiple instance. So if, if a particular person is trying to access the database by creating a new instance, it will stop there and it will check whether that reference is already created or not. Okay, so if reference is not null, that means reference is already created. So it will return that existing reference, which was already created. But if the reference is null, then it will allow them to create a new instance and then return it. Okay. So like this actually singleton design pattern actually works. So we will be understanding through code now, like how singleton design pattern is working internally. Then we will be having a good exposure towards understanding singleton design pattern. Okay. So you have now understood the use case actually where it is getting used. Okay. So during configuration, during logging purpose, or while accessing the data from the database in these scenarios, basically singleton design patterns actually uh, works in real time scenarios. Okay. So for making your uh, understanding more simpler, we will be explaining you with simple steps, like how singleton design pattern works and what all things we need to take care of before actually moving for forward with implementation of singleton design pattern. So let me share my screen. So we have learned it till here, the types of design pattern, basically it's of three types, creation, structural, behavioral. So we, was, we are starting with singleton now. So singleton design pattern is coming under creational design pattern. So creational design pattern means we are creating an object. Okay. So while creating an object, we are actually restricting it basically to one instance as and when it is required. So we are not creating multiple instances, rather we are restricting it to allow to create only the instance of that particular uh, class when and on only and when it is not created already. Okay, if it is created, then we will not allow it to create it again. So that is the singleton design pattern it means only one class will have one type of object. Okay, so it will not allow to create multiple object. So we will understand it through code, like how it is being worked internally. So to understand singleton design pattern, basically, uh, first of all, let me create a class. Class singleton, single thread. So these are, there are two types of uh, uh, ways to handle singleton design pattern. Okay. One is single threaded, one is multi-threaded. Single threaded, like one single thread is there. So we don't have to think about it much, but the problem arises when there are multiple threads which are coming at the same point of time. That time it creates an issue. Like if multiple threads are coming and accessing the same resource again and again, then how will you handle that scenario? So we will be coming to that particular step. First of all, we will be understanding singleton single, uh, uh, sorry, single threaded singleton design pattern. Okay. So 
let me start with it so basically what you do in the case of object creation so you are creating constructor or if you are not creating constructor by default uh, default constructor gets overloaded okay and then we are able to create the object for this class so if you want to create the object for this class how will you create the object for this class so we can create the object for this class with the help of new keyword okay so if we are doing this obj equal to new so like this if we do we are allowing it to create the object of it so what will happen every time you are uh, making use of this object every time you are creating a new object it will allow, allow you to create a new object again and again okay so let's suppose i am writing again obj1 again it is allowing me to create a new object maybe it's not of much use to me to create this new object still it is allowing me to create a new object again and again again and again so you can see like in heap memory lot of instances will be created so out of memory error chances will be there to occur okay so there are a lot of things which are interdependent with each other so that's why it uh, singleton is very much important okay so let me start it with here once so how can we restrict the object creation like this which we are doing like with new keyword we are creating object right so how can we restrict it so with the help of private constructor we can restrict it okay so what's the first and foremost requirement in singleton design pattern we need to have private constructor okay so if you have created private constructors you can see here it started throwing me error change the visibility to package so if i am creating private constructor it will not allow me to create the instance over here okay so now singleton comes into place now the next question is how we can create the object as of now so for creating object basically what we can do over here we can define one variable okay so we can define private first of all we will be defining one method okay we have to create one instance right so let me create a, a method for that public static class type okay the class name should be same right that's why we are keeping it as static you already know that for static instances only uh, one time the object gets created in the heap okay and then we are accessing it from the class name itself like class name dot method name we are directly creating okay so only one time the memory uh, is being occupied for that particular uh, method okay so again and again multiple copies will not be created only one single copy will be created in the memory so let me create this okay so we will be create having get instance method over here okay so now we will be having one method okay we have to check whether that reference is already there created or not so for that we need to have one reference variable as well so for that what we have to do we will be creating one variable private static class type ref okay so we have created our own instance and then here what we will be doing we will be checking whether that reference is already created or not so what we will write over here if reference is null means first time a particular uh, one particular thread is coming and trying to occupy the resource trying to create an object lock on the resource and then it is trying to uh, create the object of it okay so what we will be doing over here we will be returning the instance of it okay and then we will be directly returning here so here what we have done so here we can understand like we are creating the instance over here so what is it actually it's it is called as lazy initialization 
why it is called as lazy initialization because the instance is being created when the reference is actually null so it is not by default creating instance uh, without checking anything the reference properties okay so it is creating the instance only and only when reference is null so this is called as lazy initialization so what we will be doing over here so we can't create object like this now now we can create object with the class name class name dot get instance so now it's able to access the resource over here right so now let me check the hash code of it okay is private constructor then private static class type reference and then public static get instance method okay and we are calling get instance method and we are returning the reference okay and then we are printing it the hash code of it okay so let's run the code and see once you can see here hash code is coming properly fine okay and then what we are doing let's suppose I'm creating one more instance, obj1. Let me check the hash code. See, the hash code is coming as same. In spite of the fact that we have created two different objects of the same class, we are getting the same hash code. That means singleton property is not being broken okay and it's perfectly working fine that means every time you create an object you can create object thousand times one lakh times still it will create only one single instance so what is actually happening here it is single threaded so one times one thread will come okay it will check the reference check first if reference is null or not so one time first time that object will be null only though it will allow it to go inside and then it will create a new instance and then it will go ahead okay so let me debug for you so that you can get the idea on it like how it is internally working so once you will see the debugging part after debugging you will get a clear perception like how it is working okay so let me debug debug as java application so let me go inside yeah so first time if you see the reference value is null so it will go inside and it will create the new instance and then it will return it you can see here new reference has been created and then it is returning me back with the new instance created so it will print a hash code now again i'm trying to create a new instance again it will go inside and then if you check over here the reference is already created the reference is not null so what it will do it will go out of the if condition and then it will return me back the original instance which was already created so that's why if you see the hash code will return me the same value now you are understanding internally how it is checking the reference equality check basically the hash code check it is checking so i hope you got the clarity on this and you got the understanding like how singleton is working internally but this is just the understanding of single threaded uh, singleton design pattern what if there are multiple threads coming what if there are three four threads coming and trying to acquire the resource okay then what will happen it will create data inconsistency. Let's suppose one uh, thread has already occupied this resource and trying to create the object lock and trying to create a new instance at the same point of time, uh, another thread has come and, and, and it is also trying to acquire this resource and trying to create a new instance. Then just think about it like how it will create like, it, there will be a lot of data inconsistency problem that is going to come over here. So how can we resolve this issue basically? So we can make use of double check locking concept and we have to make use of one keyword which is called as volatile. So what we will be doing over here, we will be making use of volatile. Okay, after making use of why we are making use of volatile? Because actually what is happening when we are not making use of volatile, uh, the, that particular thread is making changes to that particular internal cache memory only. 
each thread has its own memory okay and when one thread is making any changes to any of the field values it is making change for that particular threads cache memory basically so for that actually what is the issue coming another threads like thread 2 thread 3 thread 4 they are not able to uh, see basically ki what actually what actual modification thread 1 has done so to resolve this problem basically uh, we have to make use of volatile so that the changes are being reflected at the main memory okay not in the cache memory at the individual thread level so for with the help of that what is happening all the threads will be able to see what actual changes all other threads are doing okay so for that sake volatile is very important keyword and we have to make use of it then again what we have to do we have to make use of double check locking concept but before that i want to show you that lazy initialization and eager initialization that i have already told you in in case of lazy initialization you can see we are creating the reference when the reference is actually null but if we are defining the same thing over here okay if we are, if i am defining the same thing over here like this if we define and then we are returning it from here directly Okay, so this is actually eager initialization. So you know the difference between lazy and eager initialization, right? So actually what is happening in that scenario, eager initialization will initialize the object at the server startup. So it will not check whether the instance is already created or not. It will create the instance and, uh, and it will keep that object ready. Okay, whether you will be using it or not in future, it doesn't matter. It will keep the object ready. So let's suppose that object will not be of any use in future. Still that object will be kept ready for others to create the instance. So it is like wastage of memory, like why we are creating instance when it is not required as of now. So eager initialization is that's why not preferred. So lazy initialization is much more preferred because when we are in need of object creation, then only object creation required to be created. So we will be putting it back. So now we have to make use of double check locking concept to support multi-threaded application. So for that, what we have to do, we have to do uh, what we have to do over here. We have to do synchronization. Okay. So we will be doing synchronized. I will be explaining you why we are doing that. Synchronized. And then within synchronized, we will be writing the class name. And here we will be again checking if reference equal to null, then what we have to do, we have to create the new instance. So we'll be removing it from here and we'll be setting it over here. Okay, I hope you got the clarity, like how it is working. So if we do like this, then what will happen? How it will internally work? So basically two changes we did for multi-threaded application. First change is we are making use of volatile keyword. And the second change is we are making use of double check locking concept with synchronized block. So actually what is happening over here, first time the thread will come. Okay, first thread will come over here and will try to attack. Let me show you. So let me change the color. Okay, yeah. So first time, first thread will come over here. Okay, thread one has come over here now. So what will happen? It will acquire the uh, lock on this particular resource and then thread one will work on this and synchronized. That means at this particular area, no other thread will work as of now because first thread has already occupied the lock on it. Then here, if ref equal to equal to null, here double check it will do like whether that particular thread has already occupied the lock on the resource or not. So here thread one has occupied the lock on the resource. So condition will get satisfied and then the new instance will be created and other set of functionalities if it is required, it will be done. So during that time in multi-threaded application, there may be a chance that another thread might come at the same point of time. Okay, there might be a chance that another thread is coming. Okay, so some operation is going on internally by first thread at the same time thread two is also coming over here at the same time. Then what will happen? Thread two here, if ref equal to equal to null, what will happen over here? this condition will get satisfied. Yes, this thread two is actually null because it's a new thread, okay? And we have to create a new instance. So initially the reference will be null. So here condition will get satisfied, but when it will go inside synchronized block, here actually it will synchronize, okay? It will check that uh, whether uh, the previous thread has released the lock on the particular resource or not. Then only it will allow the new thread to occupy the, ac acquire the lock on the, but this particular set of resources. So here, after the synchronized block, it will understand like, no, thread one has already, is already acquiring the lock as of now. So thread one has not released it as of now. 
so during that time it will not allow thread two to go inside it so here first condition will get satisfied if ref equal to equal to null condition gets satisfied so it is allowing to go inside but here actually it will not allow to go inside so from here only it will go outside thread two because thread one has already acquired a log so now let's suppose thread one has completed its task okay thread one has released a log now thread one has released the object log now okay now thread one is uh, has uh, let others to allow to create the lock on the resource. So now what will happen again thread uh, two will come. Okay, again thread two will come after a certain period of time and then it will do the check, null check. Yes, reference is null. Now it will go inside and then it will check if reference is null. So it will check whether is there any currently existing thread acquired the lock or not. No, there is no particular thread which has acquired object lock as of now. So it will allow to create the new instance for that particular thread, like thread two, thread three. So like that only multi-threaded application works in case of singleton design pattern. So I hope you got a clarity on this, like how internally data is getting created. So two concepts is very much important to understand. One is with respect to volatile keyword, why it is used. Like in the main memory, we have to make change so that visibility gets guaranteed by other threads, like what different threads has modified in that particular field values. And then in the get instance method, we have to do double check locking concept so that resource locking happens in proper synchronization. Okay, so I hope you got the clarity on this, like how internally it is working. So this is the way like single threaded and multi threaded uh, application is working along with uh, along with a design pattern, singleton design pattern. Okay, so in the next video, actually, we will be discussing about how can you break the singleton design pattern. Okay, uh, there are multiple ways to break the singleton design pattern. And that is also very much important. It is being asked in the interview, like how can you break the singleton design pattern? There are three ways to break it and how can you rectify that okay so we will be discussing that in the next video so i hope you have liked the video so if you like the video please like share and subscribe so that i get the motivation to create these type of videos again and again and uh, uh, do support me by commenting it down like how have you found, found this video did this video find it useful for you or not and uh, what all you can give me feedback also like if i need to modify if i need to make some uh, changes in my teaching style or what you what you all told things you didn't like those things you can also put it down in the comment box i will be happy to take it as a in a constructive way so see you in the next video in the next set of topics till then it's dave g signing off bye bye